<sighs> this is probably the most time consuming and complicated timeline I've worked on so far. 14 days of editing and I'm gonna break down different sections so with that being said let's start so we're not gonna be watching the whole video if you do want to watch the whole video I'm gonna put it at the end of this or it's gonna be linked in the description but we're just gonna break down different sections of the edit that I think you might be interested in how it was made all right you know Donald Trump builds skyscrapers but did you know that Donald Trump also built all this? Trump Golf Empire. Trump okay, so <laughs> we got the first 20 seconds here jam packed with a bunch of energetic stuff, kind of just really hooking the viewer into watching the video and just showing the best parts of the property. And that's exactly, you know, how we did that. Now you can see a little golf ball here that's about to hit the camera. If I go a few frames forward. Anyway, we'll get to that in a second, but just to kind of go over what's going on here, because that was a lot. Let's go back. <laughs> so if you look closely right here, if you go frame by frame right here, you'll notice that there are little sections being built like it's piece by piece, right? And you, obviously you have the sound effects that went with it. You know Donald Trump builds skyscrapers. But how I pretty much did this, I had a draw mask and I masked around it and then frame by frame, I changed it to where it went up more and more pretty much. And then you move forward here and I have some speed ramps if you couldn't tell. Uh, going through and the camera is actually moving back here and halfway through because I added motion blur over it uh, I just cut to a different shot and so it flows nicely it's not really too abrupt uh, because the motion blur kind of covers the the straight cut right and so that's how kind of move between sections and then add some different elements throughout. And so this effect here, pretty much how you do this is you take whatever clip you're trying to speed ramp and obviously you do the speed ramp that, that you want. And then once you're done with that, you put it into a compound clip and reverse it. That's pretty much it. And then you put it afterwards and that's how you get that boomerang type of thing, right? And so I did that multiple times, just going through and then it finally goes through. Again, here, uh, these are two separate clips, like completely separate clips. The, the drone didn't go all the way forward, but I cut to the other shot and added a motion blur over it that kind of blended the two shots together. If you look at it frame by frame, you can notice it a little bit more, but... So, and now one of the most significant parts of it that's really noticeable when it comes to visual effects and the editing done to it uh, is the title and so as you can see here there's motion blur and I added a uh, adjustment layer over it and pretty much shook with keyframes I think I added the handheld effect and I brought it up more whenever the title hit the ground and then slowly brought it back down so you can see it right here a little bit more so it's shaking of course there's motion blur over all of this and then it goes back right same thing same process with everything else kind of just goes shakes forward goes back of course the titles are 3d tracked to the space using m tracker 3d if you wanted to know the plugin that i used for it and that's what i used and you'll notice there's a little it moves back with the beat right there's a little shadow here with the with the plane going across and obviously all of this stuff has sound design to it. Here's some before and afters, kind of just looking through everything without the effects and color grading and all that kind of fancy stuff. I guess not really fancy, it's necessary, but moving forward. Skyscrapers may carve the skylines of American cities, but Trump's biggest property is horizontal, not vertical. Welcome to Trump Doral, right square in the heart of Miami, Florida. 
The scale of this property is massive. It's really hard to comprehend. It's huge. It's larger than Universal Studios, both Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom combined, the Taj Mahal, Buckingham Palace, 44 White Houses, 10 MetLife Stadiums, that's the biggest stadium in America, and the entire country of Monaco. Today on Trump's Cribs, we're gonna live like Trump at Trump Doral. But <laughs> okay, when I tell you that that was such a hassle to render, and export. It doesn't seem like it's mainly the motion blur that's added on top of all those assets, right? That makes it take so long that I was trying to figure out different ways to just make it go smoother. And I have a Mac studio, right? Like 128 gigs of RAM, all that stuff. It's just processing that right there for some reason it took so long. I mean, I had multiple things 3D track to the space plus uh, the zoom in and zoom out and motion blur on top of all of that. If I didn't have a Mac Studio, I can guarantee that my, if I use my laptop, probably would have exploded. I did the last Trump Cribs with my laptop and yeah, that was not fun. I explained that in the other, you can go check out that editing breakdown that I did a while ago. Uh, I explained all that. But, like I said here, there's a golf ball that hits the camera, and there was a swing behind it, like a psh, you know, hits the golf ball, yeah, yada, yada, yada. All that sound effects, anything that you see on the screen pretty much all have sound effects to it, and you can hear it in the video as well. But it hits the screen, which transitions into the next portion uh, that has a shake like, like it hit the camera. Not this, I just hit, I just said hit the screen, hit the camera. I guess your screen if you're looking out. It's getting too confusing. Let's just say camera, all right? It hits the drone. With that, I added a hit uh, with the camera shake, kind of like what I did with the titles hitting the ground earlier. That zooms in and highlights the skyline uh, whenever he mentions it. Then I added a blur transition. Now the idea behind this that I had whenever it goes to this was obviously this is representing the building itself and you can see I have a paper background here and I didn't just do that to kind of just add stuff, right? I did that because I wanted to resemble a 2D type of aspect to the building and then you'll you'll see here uh, whenever he mentions the golf course horizontal obviously it turns as he says that again it's just the shape right and then it has you know stuff on it but the idea behind this is you know that scene from it might be a little bit funny but you know that scene from inside out whenever they're going through the tunnel and then they kind of turn into the the, the 2D type of figures. That's kind of what gave me the idea for this because I thought it would be a cool way to make it simple but explain what he's saying a little bit better. And now a lot throughout this video that you'll notice is whenever it cuts to a different shot, I made a quote unquote match cut. So what that means is when it goes to a different shot, your eyes are in the same area that is focused on from the previous scene. For example, when this goes and blurs, cuts to the other shot, you'll see this little box, it kind of cropped in, and then immediately goes to the sign that's in the center of the screen, right? So that's, I did that a lot with this video because I tried my best to make everything flow pretty nicely, you know, with a purpose throughout this whole project. So it zooms out and <laughs> with this effect, uh, I, I got it, the map, I zoomed out, rotated, slowed down, and then he said heartbeat, and you can hear I added, I added the heartbeat sound effect as this glowed red, like it's the heart. And then it zooms out even more to reveal 
the title and arrow pointing to the area that they were at in Miami. I looked it up, I got the address and everything. And all of this is 3D tracked as well to the actual map itself. And so, and then I did the boomerang style effect the same way. Anyway, you get to this section, simple transition going forward. You got huge, huge. It's a joke, it's not misspelled. I hope none of you thought it was misspelled. They wanted me to add that later on. And obviously you got the little shimmer going on here with the sound effect to kind of just add a little bit more spice to it, right? And all of this, I'm gonna kind of just brush over, you could see it, the motion blur. And this whole thing is one drone shot. I know earlier I said I cut between multiple and just added a blur between to kind of blend it. But this is all one drone shot. My brother, Royce, which you can subscribe to. He has his own channel as well. He covers a lot of the production aspect of videos. Uh, he filmed, he had a drone and he recorded going around the whole property pretty much. And so I thought, I was like, hey, maybe whenever he's mentioning this stuff, I can just speed ramp it and have it tracked to two different areas that the drone goes by. Right, and so that's exactly what I did. But if you go inside here, this is how I achieved it. This is what's going on. You got the shot. There's different sections. I had to cut different sections out uh, and then track it to that area because the M tracker itself, there was some, it would bug a little bit uh, tracking the whole rotation of the property, which is a lot, so it makes sense. And so I pretty much cut each clip uh, where I wanted to start the track. It's pretty much where you'd see the asset. Uh, and I made them into their own little compound clips. Just made those go faster and slower and that process throughout pretty much, you can see here there's more and more and more up until the last section here that was the heaviest to export. And so going into that, you get this, right? I had a adjustment layer over top all of this you'll see here this line of adjustment layers are all the camera movements zoom in zoom out zoom in i used add motion if you're wondering add motion but that's what all of this is so i cut zoom to another spot cut zoom to another spot like you saw and then all of these are from the tr m tracker 3d and then of course you got the uh, motion blur up top here now Zooming in you got the screens showing up and I had an issue with this itself Pretty much the the issue that I had here was he at wanted to add the number counting and stuff And so I put the photo into a compound clip added the number going up with the motion blur over it built that out and I, I shrunk the image a little bit and put the title a little bit outside of the image. It's transparent behind it and that's how you get that that look. And I tried doing that with just the compound clip and it made it run so slow for whatever reason that it would it wouldn't even export the section. Like it would fail at that part because something happened within the within the compound clip that was just bugged out and so I went about actually exporting the clip itself and using that inside of the the m tracker drop zone right and so how i exported it to have a transparent background was if you go to export file and you go to settings and you click on video i guess you could do video only at this for this but if you do apple prores i'm pretty sure it's 4444 that's the whole project, 20 minutes. If it was up, it was, whew. that's how you can export transparent backgrounds uh, and stuff like that. Actually, you know what I just noticed? I don't light a candle. All right, there we go. Anyway, moving on. And so it's pretty straightforward. I just adjusted the settings in add motion and had it move across without any 
any adjustment layers up here it look like that it's just a straight shot moving forward but i added the camera movement and all that kind of stuff to pick up with the pace and so and you all you and you'll also notice if you go back here it just reminded me there's a lens flare and i added that actually that's not a part of the video camera angle itself if you get rid of it, you'll notice that it goes away. You don't have that flare. And I kind of just want to add to that to add some extra beauty to the shot as far as the golf course and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and of course, you know, it's graded as well. Looks very gray, right? And so you add the color grade plus the lens flare and the camera movement as well. And you got that. And now this transition <laughs> took some tweaking i said it as well inside of the the editing session uh, that i had to figure this one out it was a little bit difficult to figure out because the idea was it goes up into the sky into this shot but obviously you have the buildings on the bottom and the top so the idea was it would zoom up into the title itself and then show that but here's the thing there's not that much space of sky in these shots when it comes to being able to pan up like that. And so what I had to do was keyframe it. If you look here, keyframe it down. And this is moving quick enough that you don't really notice all this. But as it zooms up, the keyframe goes up and then it's zoomed in on the title. And it goes back like so. All right, that was the first minute explained. Now, let's move on to another section. Mikael showed us to our rooms, and if you're gonna live like Trump at the Trump Doral, there's only one room you're gonna be staying in. So here is the presidential suite. We have an incredible view. Obviously here a beautiful living room, very unique design. You have the master bedroom. We have uh, the master bathroom. Okay, so this is the first introduction to this effect, which you'll see later on throughout the rest of the project. And it's just the, the vibe of the video that's added you can see here the camera zoomed in on the shot and then it zooms out showing the other side by side going over the trump stuff and then it's also masked to be overlapped of this shot and you'll actually see a shadow uh, right here indicating that's above it and like all this stuff it's the same effect the boomerang type of effect that i explained earlier there's motion blur over all of it, and that is that. We look like a president at the Trump Doral. Thank you, Mikael. Amazing. Uh, what's next? Enjoy your stay. First of all, relax, and then I'll see you in the experience salon a little bit later. Our next stop was the experience salon. Uh, again, there was a, a little section there at the end transitioning into the next part with that same of effect and every time this effect hits there's a projector sound behind it it has that flickering type of you know look to it it's pretty much a grade uh and a obviously the visual effects the flicker and yeah it's it's a kind of an adjustment layer that i put over the different parts that you see in future stuff in this video that I added. And with these effects, it's it's rotoscoped out, right? Uh, and the highlights are brought way down. Uh, and then once it cuts, it's back to normal because it's the actual shot. And yeah, and there's actually a section here in this next part that I want to look over. Stop was the experience salon. A Every single title sequence like this has that effect over it, and that's how it's kept up with the pace. 
Also, you'll notice here in a second, whenever we introduce people, I added the effect over that as well. Kind of just something that I, I used throughout to have the same style connecting it throughout the whole video, right? Some of these bottles you can't get for any price, anywhere. met by Joe, the food and beverage director of the Trump Doral. Again, he introduced, like I just said, he introduced him and I added a little, his name, which is Joe, goes into the thing there, highlights. Um, and then again, his, what he does and all that. Um, and then this section I added, it's got a little, some side by sides. It has has the shot on the left and the shot on the right. It's a little bit closer, and then it goes down. It's the same style throughout this. The shot on the right is closer than the shot on the left. A little bit more detail goes up, showing more, and then on to the video. And now, baby, it's time to sit back and drink some American brown water. Mmm, tastes like freedom. To fly to Europe. Now you'll see I added black bars. Let me find a shot that can really show. I added black bars here to really give it that cinematic feel. Uh, and then it's got some blurred edges across the side here. And I brought down pretty much every other color besides the like orange, red type yellowish type of colors. And so it's that's just the style of color grading I went here. I wanted to make it noticeably different from the rest of the video, right? Because it's a cinematic portion uh, of him pouring it. And obviously the sound effects are all throughout that you'll be able to hear. Right, and those are all sound effects that uh, that's not, none of that is in camera. All of that I had to find uh, the sound effect to apply over and just line up, you know, wherever it hits the glass and all, all that stuff. Here it's a bit more noticeable that the yellows and the reds, all that kind of stuff is the saturations there, but everything else is really unsaturated. And all of it's on beat, right? with the classical song. I know, guys. Right there, it closed, went to the next scene as soon as it, it was all on beat. Just to get planted gold because it's available in like the duty-free shops, like the airports of Paris. They don't Again, this, so this right here uh, is not actually, the reason why it doesn't have the grade over it is because it's not, it's a part of a different section. It's not the cinematic section itself. So it's B-roll over him talking, and that's why it looks different in that aspect. Here, it's very, very rare. It's unbelievably hard to get. Our Buffalo Trace. Then you're gonna go into the Blanton's Gold, and then you're gonna finish with the Unicorn, the Rock Hill. Again, it's B-roll, so it doesn't have that. Doral. And God bless America. Enjoy. Now that actually went on. We decided to cut it shorter, but that went on a lot longer. I would say maybe about 10, 20 seconds longer uh, of them trying the different stuff with the music and all that. We decided to cut it shorter on this just to kind of flow better in the video and move forward from this section. BLT is one of the best steakhouses in the country, award-winning and a spectacular spread presented by the executive chef. The showstopper tonight is gonna be the nice... Uh and now you'll notice this effect throughout this section is there's a lot more boxes 
And we had to add some captions here because you couldn't really notice or hear what he's saying necessarily unless you focus a little bit better. So we just visualized it to kind of get the joke across that you're about to see. But you'll see this effect in this section a lot more coming up. So let's check it out. Uh, Halpern steak, it's gonna be a nice tomahawk steak too. <laughs> Everyone, goes to Everyone goes to ALX. Everyone goes to ALX. Again, this was a somewhat of a match cut where you've, you've got Benny's face here. I zoomed in and had his face in the same area so your eyes aren't moving in, you know, crazy all over the screen. And then it zooms out from that, showing, uh, you know, his reaction and stuff. That's also, again, why I had it zoomed in on closer to him so you can see his face and his reaction to that and then showing the whole steak. Now that is way too pink for my liking. I would not, uh, I would not have that. Not for me. And you can see here, you got that effect again. It's pretty simple how, how I achieved this is I just had a adjustment layer over it, starting zoomed in on the section I wanted, zooming out, and then later on zooming back in into the other section that I wanted to. And so the grade is a little bit different here. It's a little bit cleaner, bluer, I guess, which is how you'd want a kitchen to be if they're making your food clean. Uh, and then this is a little bit more graded, warmer, you know, it's outside, they're eating outside. I thought that was something, that was a little bit neat. I like how it's, how the colors, it's kind of checkered here a little bit. I think that's pretty cool. But nothing compares to the bone-in ribeye. Mm. Oh. Be a man, go to the Trump. Where they still know what a man is. How big is this? It's 38 ounces. 38 ounces. That is a whole cow. Well, chef, chef, you're doing a lot more for Benny than you do for me. <laughs> <laughs> I need Benny to be here. <laughs> and throughout this whole section, I can't even, I'm not even sure what track we're on right now. There's a lot of music in this one. There's a lot of different tracks in this, which I do a lot in different projects because it shows, it fits the, the section that it needs to because the music really does help build out the type of environment that you're wanting for that section. And so obviously here it's a little bit more, what's the word? Happier, upbeat type style, you know, they're eating, enjoying the moment. And so I just found some nice music uh, to match that vibe. Trump Doral is a massive property with something to offer for everyone. Multiple restaurants, meeting rooms, event halls, full gym, a yoga room, Trump store, where you can get all types of knickknacks, stuff for my kids. Speaking of my kids, you get sore as a parent, bending over all the time, lifting up your kids. I needed a massage, and thank God, the Trump had exactly what I needed. But first, a golf cart ride. So you know, you might be wondering, why are you showing us the day two section? What's so special about that? but it might not be what you're thinking. It's not because this is tracked to the ground and the golf cart is in front of it. It's actually because I wanna focus a bit more on the color grading here. Uh, obviously, this is graded and you could probably tell there's a lens flare that was added. And let's check this out. Let's get in depth. If you turn off and on the lens flare, here, let's do a side by side here. So it's different parts of the video. Like earlier on, I added a lot of the drone shots actually, because it has the sun in the in the shot. And so obviously it's tracked to the sun, and so the flare moves across with it uh, like so. And then again with this here, with the grade, I had to mask this area. You'll notice I had to add a mask to kind of darken the top right, because it's a little bit blown out and I wanted more saturation in that area. 
And so I added a mask there that was kind of feathered, uh, going across. And yeah, and then we get to this whole section here. It's really sped up, you know, classic speed ramps going through. And right here, you might have noticed an effect here that took place where when he starts talking about everything inside of the building, it zooms in, rotates, and oh my goodness, the doors, they're opening. So that's an effect that I kind of thought of and I wanted to, to pull off and pretty much how that was done is if we go inside this compound clip, you'll see some layers here. You got the grade uh, over top everything, got some motion blur, a adjustment layer over it that adds that zooming in effect going across. You've got one door, which was masked. And then you got the other door that was masked out as well. And then you got the background of both doors that were masked out. And so the background's black. And when you put that into a compound clip, this right here that is masked and this, if you put that over everything, that's anything underneath the compound clip will be a part of that effect. And I added, you'll see here, drop shadows behind the doors as well to give it a nice look like it's in front. And then here he went through everything really quick. So I decided to just swipe, transition, just going through all the sections, moving across, uh, cause he goes over it pretty quickly. I was starving, so I texted Mikhail if I could get some lunch, specifically. Right here, you'll notice that it was also in the first Trump Cribs, uh, we had that text effect kind of tracked to the phone and all that pizza i texted anastasia if she could help us and here she is anastasia so we went ahead and just rolled with that and applied it again here and nothing much to it it's pretty much just tracked over and you just got the effect like a text message going through and then it fades out with the blur i added a blur to it as it fades and then sound effects over all of that. I was inside of the Oval Office interviewing the president and I saw him hit the button. I saw myself. This little brush over effect drawing type of thing. Uh, you're gonna see it more later on in the video. If you're a Final Cut user, uh, there's a plugin that you can get called Arrows. Um, or lines, I guess, but there are arrows inside of the plugin and that's how you can achieve this nice and efficiently. You could achieve it in other ways, but this was a more efficient and, you know, get the edit done quicker and have that animation. And it just is very convenient to be able to put that together with this. Uh, same thing with the circling and all that was through this effect. Okay, so now we're gonna get into one of the funniest parts of the, uh, maybe, the funniest part of the whole video uh, that was a lot of fun to create. And there, there's some effects in here that might be, you might be interested in seeing. Uh, you know, boys, we've seen a lot, but we haven't seen the actual golf course. Does anybody hear golf? No. Uh, definitely not. No. So you're gonna spend some time at the golf course. You gotta look the part. I don't So. I was waiting the whole time. I wanted to use this track and I waited the whole time. I was just thinking like, you know, when should I use this track? I, you know, I like the track a lot. It's more fun. I actually thought of using this at the start of the video uh, when they were pulling up to the actual building, but I decided not to. And so I went ahead and used it here and it actually works pretty well when it comes to the way this is built out and and the energy behind this. I don't have any golfing clothes, don't look particularly good in pastels, but the Trump Club shop got me. All right. <laughs> you look good. This is so weird not seeing in a black t-shirt. Sure. Very comfortable shirt. I like the vibe. Very comfy. We get to ride in Donald Trump's personal golf cart with his golf clubs. These are the Trump clubs. Golf is a sincere passion for the president. Donald Trump owns multiple golf courses around the world and is a champion golfer himself. Oh, I get up the oh. Looks like four more years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
You think Biden can do that? He can't reach the tee. The one thing we're so again in this whole section, you got all these wait, the zooms and stuff requested. The horn requested by Benny. Uh, but you got all of these uh, moving into this section. Uh, again, has that same style behind it, connecting it throughout the rest of the video. But you've already got some jokes and stuff going on here. And, and very quickly, it's established what we're about to get into. And yeah, let's go ahead and uh, move forward here. iPad to do this. President, you play all that from your iPad? That's <laughs> awesome. Dance well with Pavarotti. You ever hear this one? No, sir. Where Pavarotti walks in to James Brown Scott's in London. And that's all on your iPad? Where do you hear this? Yeah. Pretty cool, right? Very cool. Well! Oh, this way. We got both of these tracks and the orientation is actually adjusted a little bit here to kind of fit the same angle that the golf cart is in. And then you got the arrow over here pointing at, uh, you know, who it is. I've got two of our golf professionals up there that may give you a couple swing tips. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. On the hardest hole. Oh, okay. Thank you. Of course. You'll be fine. Okay. You'll be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can notice there, I brought up the sound uh, to be a little bit louder for comedic effect. And then all of this is tracked once again. And so you've got the contrast of the titles pretty well done here. It looks nice. That's pretty much what I use. I use black and white for, for the texts and use it appropriately and the parts that are easy to read. And obviously it has that that shutter effect, so it has that movement to it. We only picked out the hardest shot on the golf Thanks, course. Thanks guys, so. thank you. <laughs> I really it appreciate it. Just a reminder, all these SD cards and all these cameras belong to me, so we will be deleting this footage. <laughs> oh! I was in the video, I made an appearance. I actually had all of the SD card, well, I guess Royce had the SD cards, but all of the footage was sent to me, so I have all the footage. So I have the power. <laughs> How was that? Now this was actually a bit difficult to get right as far as the tracking goes because being able to, to have the right orientation uh, and then added motion blur to it, to the line. But for some reason the, the tracking wasn't really fully there. It might be because it was moving the camera so quick, but I had to adjust and move the line manually on some portions uh, and the orientation of the line as well. This one was a bit easier because obviously it's a flat surface. There's not that much movement, uh, but there is some, I mean, he starts to zoom in and yeah, I had to adjust some of it there as far as the orientation. I had to do all of that manually uh, to line up correctly and move, a, move it some. <laughs> The strategy is essentially to hit the ball and try it to not to get in the water, but we'll see. I don't, I don't know. Does that make your golf? No. Uh, definitely not. No. Mm. All right. <laughs> Again, same effect here. This was actually a little bit easier out of the shots because it didn't move as much. And it's pretty much a straight on shot, not moving across. But they still took time because some of it had to be done manually. Don't laugh at me, Bryce. <laughs> You're going to do this too. Bryce, what are you thinking here? Um, I played putt putt before. This is pretty similar, right? Just hit harder. Wow! First swing. 
then you know you got to add that title saying first swing because he said that he wasn't going to get it but we went ahead and just added even more to it the fact that he hit it uh, so great on the first try which is very rare no i'm just kidding i don't know it's been a while it's been a while but anyway you hit it and it was really quick so i i had to add the line again this was made with lines right because it has it's not just arrows it's I mean, the name is line, so. Added the lines, the same line here. This is pretty easy because it's a straight shot and just going straight up pretty much. And now I did have to mask the glow a little bit here. And this was also another really heavy spot for it to export for some reason. And so there was motion blur on it, some flames. I don't know if you noticed that. And then the camera shake as well, like you saw earlier on with the adjustment layer. And then if you pay attention, all of the rest of these swings are all on beat. And I did it before as well, but yeah. And yeah, that was pretty much the, the golf section. Definitely one of the more energetic, fun parts because it was, it was a lot of embarrassment there for all of them. Good thing I wasn't there, that's all I'm gonna say. That's why I'm the editor, right? <laughs> We're getting here to the outro, which is also one of, I'm, I'm pretty proud of how this ended and the way it, it sealed off the whole video. And I liked putting together this part. So let's go ahead and check it out, shall we? <laughs> we capped off the night on the balcony overlooking the sunset with a champagne toast. Truly remarkable, really. You can't find the words to describe what it's like to be in downtown Miami in a booming metropolis and to be able to see nothing but green, nothing but nature. This is a special place. It deserves to be preserved. And Donald Trump was the man to do it. You'll never get the credit that he deserves for it. It'll get a cheers from us to the Trump Doral. And yeah, that it closes off like that. Now, my main idea, you'll notice the music here uh, is very nostalgic type of sounding kind of reminiscing. I think that's exactly what I searched actually to find the music. And that's, that's the whole idea of what I wanted this section to look like. And since it is a nostalgic type of style, I decided to add the effect that had been going through most of the video to really seal it off and uh, seal the style of the effect showing really sick footage, still shots and giving it that nostalgic reminiscing of the property uh, type of style and feel. And then obviously you have the projector sound. Whoa. Okay. You have the projector sound here over this whole section playing behind it, right? But you've got all these shots just showing off the, the property and inside and outside like you're, you know, thinking of it, reminiscing of, of what it was like to be there. And some of these shots are really sick. Like this shot is awesome. I love this shot. And then this shot is also sick. And so I pretty much looked through, went back and looked through all of the footage and found the best footage that would fit this section and the style of, of all of this. Like this is following the golf cart here. Pretty sick. And then it ends on a clip of Trump. And then finally, a sound effect indicating the clink as it fades out, showing the Trump sign and the building and all of that. I think they're right here. Then it fades to black. Oh, man. I took some time to explain. And that wasn't even all of the video. <laughs> that was just sections and moments that I wanted to share 
that was built out in the editing that might be interesting to see. Now, if you do want to watch the entire video, because there was some stuff that I didn't necessarily show, you can click somewhere over here. And then if you want to see me building it from scratch, you can click down here. That's the breakdown of Trump Doral. So I'll see you at, actually, let me get a little bit closer. I'll see you at the next edit.